Well, hello, friends. I hope you're having a great day. My name's Coach Scott. I'm going to do a little bit of gymnastics with you, okay? To get us going, we're going to warm up. So I have a fun song for us to do. Then for our activity, after we've done our stretches, we're gonna do a bunch of animal movements. And it's gonna be so awesome. It's gonna be hard work, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. And then I have some gymnastics for us to do that's gonna make us go upside down. Are you ready? Let's get started. If you wanna sit down on the floor in your pike position, that's when you're sitting on your butt and your legs are straight out in front of you. I'm gonna get our song ready and we will get started. Make sure you got your listening ears on and watch me and you'll know what to do. Put those arms up high and dance. Clap those hands. Yeah, stand up. Reach your pie on those toes. Reach and touch your toes. Reach up high. Reach low. Can you slap your knees? Can you cross your arms while you slap? Ooh, let's lift our leg up. Good job. Can you do your other leg down? Lift your leg up. Good job. Make sure we're listening. Ooh, stamp your feet. Eyes closed. No peeking. Make sure there's no peeking. Ooh, bend your knees. Bend those knees. We're gonna sit back down. And put those arms up. Close those eyes. No peeking. Clap those hands. Clap them high. Clap them low. Touch your toes. Ooh, lift your leg up. Stand through your feet. And dance. Stopping part. That's all. All right, guys, let's go right into our stretch. You can sit in your straddle stretch. I'm just getting my clock here. There we go. All right, so we're gonna sit in our straddle stretch and we are going to reach up high. The sun is gonna come up and then the sun is gonna go down as we reach towards the middle. Try to keep your legs flat. If you can point your toes, even better. And the sun's gonna come back up. Reach up high. And then the sun's gonna go back down. And now we're gonna take the rain. Move those fingers, that's the rain. And we're gonna bring the rain over to, can you go to your left foot? This is my left foot. And we're gonna have it rain over here on our left foot. 
And now the rain is going to travel across to our right foot. And it's going to rain over here. All right. And now the sun. We're going to bring the sun out. And what happens when the sun comes out after the rain? What was that? A rainbow. So we're going to put one hand down in the middle. We're going to take our other arm and we're going to rainbow over our head to our opposite foot. So I've got my right hand. I'm going to go to my left foot. I'm going to rainbow over. Good. And look, we're going to have a double rainbow today. So now I'm going to take my rainbow hand, put it down. I'm going to bring my other arm and make that the rainbow. Arm and hand. I'm going to rainbow over. Good job. Now, can you show me a pike? Our legs come together. And while we're in our pike, let's point our toes. Can you point them? See how my toes are going that way? That's pointing. Now I'm going to take them. I'm going to flex them back. So now they're kind of pointing back at me. Hello, toes. And now I'm going to flex them. Or I'm going to point them, rather. They're pointing. They're pointing. Still pointing. Now they're going to flex. Then I'm going to point. And then I'm going to flex. Point. Flex. Good. Now we're going to take our arms. We're going to sit up nice and tall. And we're going to touch our toes four times. Ready? Go down one. Let's count together. Two. All the way back up. Three. Up tall. Four. Good work. And we're going to lift the leg. And we're going to move our ankle around. And if you want, you can draw a picture. You can draw anything you want with your foot because your foot now can be used for drawing. Round and round. You just got to keep moving your foot. And then we're going to bring our knee in. We're going to give it a hug. We're going to say, hello, knee. So good to see you. And you can give a kiss. And then we're going to lift up our other leg. And we're going to make that foot go round and round because now we're drawing a picture with our other foot. And then you're going to bring that knee in. Oh, so good to see you. And you can give it a kiss. Excellent. Now let's bring our feet together. Hold those feet and flap your wings because now we're a butterfly and we're flapping our wings and we're flying around. Where do you want to fly to? Fly anywhere. Where do you want to go? Okay, we can do that. I'm going to fly around my backyard. I'm going to visit all the flowers that are blooming. They're pink, they're purple. Some of them are blue. Some of them are yellow. I have one that's a pretty purplish black. And we're flapping and we're visiting all those flowers. And we stop. Now, let's see if we can bring our nose to our toes, okay? Ready? Nose down to our toes. Take a deep breath. Woo! Stinky feet. P-U. Stinky feet. P-U. Everybody's got stinky feet. Do you? Bring your nose to your toes. Ready? I bet yours smell like chocolate. Do your toes smell like chocolate? Chocolate would be great right now, wouldn't it? Nose to toes. All right. Now, let's go crisscross applesauce, arms out wide, one big clap. We're going to roll the wrists. Roll them, roll them, roll them, and now shake them. Shake them up high. Shake them down low. Can you shake one up high and one down low? Good. Can you switch them? Switch. And switch. And switch. Good. Now, let's do our table, okay? So, we're going to go feet flat. Feet flat on the floor. And then we're going to put our hands behind us just a little bit. And we're going to lift our butt off the ground, belly up to the ceiling. Try to get your body nice and flat. And then we're going to come back down. Now, my friends, if you want to challenge yourself while you're doing your table, you can try to bring your hands closer together behind you on the floor so that your pinky fingers, which are your smallest fingers, on the smallest finger on your hands, you're going to try to make your pinky fingers touch behind you, okay? I'll try to show you. Let's see if my pinky fingers can touch. I've got my hands behind me, but you got to get that belly up high. They're touching. Just barely, but they're touching. Can you do it? 
If you're not able to touch your pinkies together yet, that's okay. That's something we can keep working on as we get more and more flexible, okay? Now, let's see if we can do a rock and roll. We're gonna take our hands and we're gonna grab our shins, okay? Do not go like this, okay? We don't wanna go like this. I want us to grab our shins. So that way, when we're, one day when we're doing back tucks, we're ready to go. That day's probably a few years away though. So we're just practicing now. We're gonna grab our shins and we're going to roll backwards. And then we're gonna rock for, we're gonna rock backwards and we're gonna roll forwards, okay? So for this, you wanna make sure your back is round, okay? To help round your back, you're going to bring your head down a little bit and that's gonna to help to round your back back here. If you have a flat back like this, and you go backwards, you usually get stuck. But if your back is round, you're gonna rock back onto your shoulders, and then you're gonna roll forward, okay? Ready? We're gonna rock back, and we're gonna roll forward. We're gonna rock back, and we're gonna roll forward. Let's try that three more times. Rock back, roll forward, rock back, roll forward. Now my friends, if you wanna challenge yourself even more with your rock and roll, you can see if you can do it from a squat, okay? From right here, we're gonna grab our knees, we're gonna rock back, but when we roll forward, we're gonna roll forward to stand, okay? So. Same thing as rock and roll, our hands are gonna go on our shins. Quick anatomy lesson. What are our shins? Well, this is a foot, this is a knee. In the middle, we have a shin. So that's what we're gonna grab, all right? So let's go into our squat if you're trying this at home. You wanna make sure you have plenty of space behind you so you don't rock back into the couch or a table or a sibling, okay? So, we're in our squat, hands on our shins, rounded back, we're gonna rock back, and we're gonna roll forward to stand, up to finish position, okay? Finish position, just to go over that, if you're standing up tall, your arms go out to the top like this, you're kind of like in a Y shape, okay? So that is our rock and roll to stand. Let's do that two more times. You're in our squat, you're in your squat, hands go on your shins, nothing's behind you. Round back, and we're gonna rock back, and we're gonna roll forward. That time, I had a little bit of trouble standing up. The reason is, I didn't get a really powerful rock back in a quick roll forward. If you wanna stand up out of the rock and roll to stand, you've gotta roll quickly forward, okay? If you go slow, it's gonna be hard for you to stand up and you're probably going to stumble backwards like I did. If you go fast, that's gonna help get you to standing up, okay? Let's try it again. This is our last one. Hands, we're in our squat, hands go on our shins, round back, rock back, and roll forward. Finish. Do you see how I roll faster that time when I went forward? I'll show you one last time, so that way you can keep practicing too. And if you want to watch it again, you can see again what we're going to do to rock back and roll forward to a stand. We're in our squat, hands go on our knees, round it back, rock back, and roll forward, stand, okay? And we always wind up in our finish position. Pretty good. All right, guys, so now we're gonna go into our activity, which has us doing some animal movements, all right? So for this, I have to get a handy dandy stopwatch ready. So that way I can know that we're doing it the right amount of time. All right, now, what we're going to do here is we're gonna do an animal movement for 20 seconds, and then we're gonna rest for 10 seconds. And then we're gonna do a different one for 20 more seconds, and then we're gonna rest for 10 seconds. Don't worry, you don't have to do the counting. I have a watch that will keep track of the time for us. But 
Make sure you're listening so you know what animal position we're doing. And if you need to get a drink of water, now's the time to do it because this is hard and it's gonna be a lot of fun, all right? So get a quick drink of water and we're gonna get started with our animal movements. The first one is gonna be a frog. So we're gonna do frog jumps, okay? You're gonna start in your squat and we're gonna jump up. We're also going to do a bear crawl. So for the bear crawl, just to show you, you wanna have straight arms, straight legs, hips up in the air, and we're gonna crawl around like a bear. We're gonna do a cheetah run, which means we're gonna stand up, but we're gonna run as fast as we can. We're gonna do a gorilla shuffle. For that, you're gonna go down in your squat. Your arms are gonna rest on your knees. You're gonna shuffle around like this. That one's tricky. Your leg's gonna feel tired. Then, we're gonna do elephant stomps. Really push those legs down quick and hard. We're gonna do starfish jumps, which for us are gonna be from down here. We're gonna jump up and see if we can come back together, okay? So when we jump up, our arms go out, our legs go out, and then we're gonna finish back here. And last but not least, we're gonna do a crab walk. All right? I will remind you of all of these animal movements right before we do that, okay? But let's get started. So to start, we're going to do our frog jumps. Ready, go. You're in your squat, jump up high. Keep jumping. That's 10 seconds. Five more seconds. Jump as high as you can. One more jump. Okay, now we're resting for 10 seconds. Our next one is a bear crawl, okay, or bear walk. Straight legs, straight arms, hips up. Ready, set, go. And we're gonna crawl around with straight arms and straight legs. Keep moving, don't stop moving. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, good job. 10 seconds of rest. Next up is our cheetah run. Run as fast as you can in place, okay? Ready, set, go. Gotta run for 20 seconds. As fast as you can. Make sure your arms are moving back and forth. Bringing those knees off the ground. 10 more seconds. Faster. Stop. Whew. 10 seconds of rest. Next up, gorilla crawl. So we're gonna go down in our squat, arms are on our legs, go. We're gonna gorilla shuffle rather. We're gonna shuffle around. Your legs are gonna start to get tired. You get 10 more seconds. Even Coach Scott gets tired. Three, two, one, good. 10 seconds of rest. Next up is elephant stomps. Shake the house. Ready? Go. Push those legs down as hard as you can. Just make sure you don't shake the pictures off the wall at home. Stomping around like an elephant. <laughs> Feel free to make animal noises too. And rest. Two left. Starfish is next. Remember, you're gonna start down here, you're gonna jump up, okay? Ready, here we go, go. Starfish. Gotta get those arms and legs out. Woo, five more seconds. All right, rest. Last one is our crab walk. Three, two, one, go. Just 20 seconds left. We just keep walking back and forth. This one, you'll feel it in your arms. Triceps. And done. Woo. Good work. I'm gonna get a drink of water. You might want another one too. 
while you get a drink of water, I'll tell you a little bit about that activity. So that is a high intensity whew, workout activity that you can do at home. That's animal movements. The big thing is you do the animal movement for 20, 30 seconds. You could even do it for 45. That's what I've seen online, but I had us do it just for 20. Then though, you have to give yourself rest, okay? You have to do, so we did 20 seconds on, 10 seconds rest. You could do 30 seconds on, 15 seconds rest. So you could do 45 seconds on, 20 or 15 seconds rest. But you do need to make sure you give yourself some rest so that way you're not just going constantly, okay? To help us get back into our gymnastics and to regain our breath and just calm down, let's do a couple of deep breaths. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Let's do one more. Good. Now as our body calms down more, we're gonna work on some body positions. So to start, can anyone tell me what body position I'm in now? My legs are flat, my toes are pointed, I'm reaching forward. It is a pike, good job. Now, if I take my legs and I go out like this, what is this called? Straddle, that's right. Legs are apart, once again, knees flat. My, my kneecaps, tops of your knees, are pointing up at the ceiling. We don't want to roll them in. We want them to be pointing upward, okay? And you can reach for your feet. Another body position is tuck, which we did for our rock and roll. So you got your hands on your knees, or you can put them beside you. I prefer on our shins, rather. So let's go over. Pike, straddle, tuck, all right? I'm gonna say a body shape and I want you to go ahead and make it and then I'll show it to you. So let's see if you can remember what they are. Ready? Straddle. Are you in your straddle? Legs are apart, reaching for your feet. Legs flat. Tuck. Can you do a tuck body position? Good. What about a pike? What would a pike be? This, right? Reach for our feet. Good. Now we're gonna stand up and do some more body positions. A key body position for our handstand would be a lunge. For our lunge, one foot is in front of the other. The front leg, your knee is bent a little bit. Your back leg is straight. Our arms, we're going to have them go nice and straight so that they're up by our ears. Our hands are ready to support our body when we kick up into a handstand. So our hands are not like this. This is not ready. They're like this. They're ready to support my weight when I put them down on the ground. Now, when we're doing a lunge, you should see a straight line from the tip of my finger down through my arm, through my torso, down my back leg. All right? And you're ready to do a handstand and many other wonderful gymnastics skills. So that's our lunge. Another body position is our safe landing or our stuck landing position. Our knees are gonna be bent, our butts out just a little bit, arms forward, we've stuck the landing. Okay, let's try that again. Safe landing or stuck landing. Finish position. Let's go back to safe landing. Finish. Good. And lunge one more time. Nice straight arms. Back leg is straight. Front leg is a little bit bent. Straight line from the tip of my fingers or your fingers down through your arm, through your back leg. Arms are covering your ears. Lunge. All right. Now, we're gonna do a couple of balancing things before we move into some of our gymnastics skills for today. We're gonna to try to do a stork stand, okay? So you're gonna bring one foot up, 
I've already lost my balance. And our arms are going to go up and out. Try to point your toe on this foot and hold it. One, two, three. Okay. Normally, we have one leg or one side of our body. Maybe it's our right or maybe for you it's your left. We have one side that we like to do things with and not so much the other because, let's face it, we're not as good on the other side. So it's good to challenge ourselves to do our side that's a little bit harder. So now I'm going to do a stork stand, but I'm going to do it with my other leg. Can you do it too? Okay. And you can challenge yourself. See how long you can hold it for. Can you hold it for three seconds? Maybe five? What about seven? Can anyone do it for ten? All right. These are different ways you can work on your balance. Another skill you can do to work on your balance and your core body strength would be a scale, okay? So we're going to lift our back leg, point the back toe, arms go straight forward. We lift our back leg so that it's level with the ground and then we come back to a stand. This too, you can try using your other leg as your plant leg. The plant leg is the leg you're standing on when you do your scale. So I'm going to try my other leg now. Arms straight ahead, lifting your back leg, point your back foot. You don't want to flex it, okay? You want it almost to be a straight line from the tip of your, uh, your fingers out here to your toe behind you. So scale. Once again, a scale is something you can challenge yourself to hold for three seconds. Can you do it for five? Nice control, and then bring your body back into a stand, okay? That'll be it for our balancing skills, because we're gonna get into some skills that make us go upside down. Are you ready? I'm ready. Super muggy in here, so I'm sweating up a storm. I hope you're sweating too, but we're gonna have some fun doing some more gymnastics together, okay? So now, let's go and do a couple of donkey kicks. For our donkey kicks, we're going to put our hands down, and we're going to put our feet together, and we're going to jump our, our legs up. When we do this, I want to see if you can get your legs up higher, okay? So we're going to go donkey kick, okay? Now, see if you can do it to get your legs up higher and higher each time, all right? Keep your arms straight. We do not want to bend our arms. Arms are straight and we go donkey kick. And then you can stand back up. So those are our donkey kicks. When we're doing our donkey kicks, our body starts to get upside down, and those, that's what we're focusing on in our skills today. Skills that make our head go upside down, our body be inverted, whether it's through a roll, or a handstand, a cartwheel, all the above. At some point or another, when you're doing gymnastics, you're going to go upside down. So getting used to doing that is really helpful and beneficial for you, all right? So donkey kicks gets our head down as our legs go up. Our rock and roll to stand, remember that one? I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it now because we already did that earlier, but I'll show you. Our rock and roll to stand gets our body going above our head, all right? So it's getting us used to being upside down. So you're in your squat, you can do it with me if you'd like. You put your hands on your shins, you round your back, and you're gonna rock backwards, and you're gonna roll forward to stand, finish, okay? Each of these skills, you can do three times. So I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna talk you through your rock and roll to stand, and you can go ahead and do it as I'm speaking. So ready? Make sure there's nothing behind you. You're gonna go into your squat, Hands are gonna go onto your shins. From there, you wanna round your back, okay? And tuck your head down. So that way, when you rock back, ready, rock back, onto your shoulders, roll forward, stand up, and to finish. The key to a good rock and roll to stand is rocking and rolling fast forward. To, so that way you have momentum, you have speed, power, that's gonna bring you up onto your feet and help you to stand, okay? So rock and roll to stand. I'll show you real quick. Tuck, roll, rock, stand. 
Another skill we can do that's really similar to our rock and roll to stand is a candlestick. All right? For our candlestick, we're not going to grab our shins. Instead, we're going to have our arms up by our ears. So that way, when we bend and we rock back and we roll forward, our arms stay by our ears, okay? When we are on the ground and we've gone back and the legs are up, our arms stay by our ears. So even when we stand back up and we go to a finish, our arms stay by our ears, okay? Let's try that candlestick together. We're focusing on our arms. Arms are by our ears. You're going to kind of sit back and then you're gonna roll. Just like our rock and roll to stand, you want to, you want to roll forward quickly out of your candlestick, all right? If you go slow, it will be hard for you to stand back up. When you're in your candlestick, you want to keep those arms by your ears and try to get your legs going straight up. What you'll find is when you're doing your candlestick, a lot of you will have your legs instead, like, instead of like this, they're gonna sandwich down towards your face. If, if I had a candle that was lit, meaning it had a, a flame on it, would you want to hold it like this over somebody's face? Mm -mm. You'd want to have it straight up so it's not going to touch them, right? Same thing for your legs. We don't want your legs to touch your face. We're not trying to make a sandwich out of you. We're trying to make a candlestick. So your legs want to be going straight up with pointed toes. Try it one more time. Arms by our ears. We're going to sit back down and we're going to rock back, roll forward, finish. That's something you can work on many, many times. Make sure you keep your arms by your ears the whole way through. Legs go straight up and down when you're in your candlestick and roll fast so that way you have momentum to stand back up. That's a candlestick. Another skill we can work on would be our forward roll. For our forward roll, which I know we've done many times in class but it's always good to practice, especially while we're at home because normally in the gym we'll use a wedge mat so that we're rolling downward. Here, we just have our floor, unless you have a wedge mat at home. So working on our forward roll on the floor is a fairly new skill, I'm sure, to a lot of us. To do it, you wanna have your legs together, you're gonna to bend your knees, and you're gonna put your hands about a foot in front of you, okay? From here, we're going to tuck our head so that when we roll, it's the back of our head or the top of our neck that touches the ground. If we're gonna make that happen, we have to tuck our heads a lot. Okay, so you tuck your head as much as you can. I'm trying to look for my belly button when I tuck my head. You should too. So ready, you're gonna tuck, look for your belly button, and you're gonna roll forward to stand and finish. If you're not able to stand out of your roll right now, that's okay. Most important thing is to tuck your head so it's the back of your head that is touching the floor, okay? I'll show you one more time because I know we've done this many times in our class together. But this is another skill that has us go upside down. So we're working on upside down skills today. We're going to bend our knees. Our hands are going to go about a foot in front. We're going to tuck our head. Tuck, 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 tuck. And roll to stand. Finish. So that's our forward roll. Another skill you can work on would be your handstand. Our handstand always begins in a lunge. Good job. One foot in front of the other. Arms are straight. We're somewhat leaning forward. We get the straight line from our fingertips down through our back leg. And we're going to bring our hands down and we're going to kick our back leg up. Point that back foot. And you're going to stand back up tall into your lunge. All right? Now, we can do that again and we can do a little bit of a kick and come back up. These are just some handstand progression skills that you can work on if you're not ready to kick up into your handstand yet. We're in our lunge. We're bringing our hands down. So this is the first one. Always start and finish in your lunge. The next one is bring our hands down, a little bit of a kick, 
Come back up. If you're comfortable with that little kick, you can try to bring your feet together, not at the top of your handstand, but maybe 45 degrees up, you can have them touch. So you're in your lunge, and then you bring your hands down, and finish back in that lunge up tall, okay? Then if you're ready, and you have space around you, you can try to kick up into your handstand. You're gonna bring your back leg up first, and then the, the front leg is gonna meet it up at the top, then that front leg's gonna come down first, and your back leg last. All right? So, in your lunge, you're going to, okay? See how I brought one leg up first, second leg to meet it, second leg comes down, the, the first leg you brought up goes down last. All right, I'll show you one more time. It's important that you have that order. The order does matter when you're doing the handstand. Forward, up. Laying back in that lunge. Handstand requires us to go upside down. Another skill you can do, which I don't feel comfortable doing in here, I don't have enough space, would be a cartwheel, okay? You could do it this way. If you're just beginning to learn a cartwheel, you can put one foot in front of the other. If my left foot is in front, my left hand is gonna be the first hand to go down, okay? Then my right hand, all right? So for this, we're just gonna jump our feet over. So I'm gonna go hands down, jump over, all right? We should actually do it with our feet together. Sorry about that. Hands down. That's how you can prepare yourself for a cartwheel. One of the ways. Hands down, jump your feet around. So for some of us, that'll be the skill to work on to get ourselves ready. If you're doing that, you wanna make sure your hands are turned, your fingers are pointing out, okay? If you put your hands like this, you're not gonna be able to do a cartwheel or that skill. If you are working on a full cartwheel, one thing I can tell you to look for when you're doing a cartwheel is which, where your hands go and where your feet go. When you're doing your cartwheel, if your left leg is forward, your left hand is gonna be the first hand down. Then your right hand, all right? So watch, left hand, right hand. Now, but when you come over, you see how my left foot was in front? When you come over and land in your cartwheel, your right foot is gonna wind up in front and your left foot winds up and back. So your hand placement and where your legs start and finish is something you can look, in, look at and work on in your cartwheel while you're at home working on upside down gymnastics. And our last skill today, if you wanna try it, would be a headstand. A headstand has this go upside down. Make sure you have a mat underneath you or something cushy that you feel comfortable with. For your headstand, you wanna start on your knees and you put your hands out in front. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our head down to make a tripod. From here, you can bring your knees up onto your hands, or onto your elbows, or you can do a tuck and come back down. You have to use your arms to do a headstand so that you can support your body weight and control your body. Make sure you have something that is uh, comfortable, a cushion underneath you, a mat, so that way you do not hurt your head and you have to use your hands. It's even better if you do this with a grown up around you so they can help control your body so you don't fall over, okay? So for your head stand, one last time, you can put your knees down, put your hands in front, then you're gonna bring your head down and you're going to lift your knees off the ground. And whoop, you can do a tuck. I have a hard time doing a headstand. You can do a tuck position with your knees up off, the, off of your arms if you're able to, and you can hold that position and come back down. So this has been some upside down gymnastics. I hope you've stuck with me through the whole thing and had fun. I know I had some fun. I gotta go work on my headstand though. So I'm gonna get going to do that, but I hope you have a great day. Bye.